Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. Let me know in the comments how your day is. I always want you guys to have an amazing day. You know, Ben and Jerry have been interesting. The last like six or eight weeks, Jerry has not fed. Bed has done all the eating. And, you know, the truth is, is that, you know, with two-headed snakes, at least ones like this, they do share the same stomach. So, it's, I'm not sure if it matters, but it does kind of bother me that Jerry hasn't been eating and Ben has done all the eating. So, today, we're going to do our best we can do to get them both to eat. I know Ben is ready to go, so he'll eat for sure, but hopefully we can finally get Jerry back eating. So, what do you say we give it a shot? Start our day off feeding a two-headed snake. You guys hungry? Let's go, guys. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Come on. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. There's Ben, of course. And what I do, if you guys have followed it, is I'll always let Ben eat a little bit before I even offer to Jerry because I think they have that symbiotic relationship where Jerry realizes that it needs Ben to eat first before it eats. So we'll let Ben get about halfway done, then we'll offer to Jerry, and hopefully we'll see Jerry eat. Again, the first time in probably six or eight weeks. Okay, about time. What do you say we try to give it a go? Jerry, you wanna eat, girl? Or boy? Jerry, you wanna eat? You wanna eat? Oh. Come on, come on, bud. You can see right now that Ben is actually pulling away and Jerry is kind of not steering the ship at all. So, but you can see now Ben is trying to eat the second one already and just won't let Jerry eat. I think that's the idea. So now what happened in the past was that Ben would actually be preoccupied with eating and then Jerry would actually eat. But we haven't been able to get Ben to stop controlling the body and as long as he's controlling, Jerry's not interested. So again, I don't know that Jerry's gonna eat this time. Oh, and you can see Ben just took another one. And that's the thing. It's really a weird thing right now. Again, what typically would happen was Ben was like just kind of preoccupied and Jerry was like, all right, it's my turn. I can eat now. And he took over the control of the actual body and Ben just dropped it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull over here. And I'm sure, yep, there he goes. He took it again. But again, now he's got it in a weird position. I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm trying my hardest to get Jerry to eat. Again, do I think it matters? I don't really know to be totally honest with you. But I I am kind of bummed out that Jerry's not eating. They did seem to be a little bit more robust when both heads were eating, which doesn't make a lot of sense if they share the same stomach, but that was just maybe my recollection of it. I'm not 100% sure. So regardless, uh, a little bit freaked out, gonna continue to try to see if we can get Jerry to eat, but uh, I don't think it's gonna look very good today. I think Ben is gonna do all the eating once again. Excited that we're gonna get to mess with Beetlejuice a little bit. Ironically enough, uh, I saw an Instagram story over there. Uh, by the way, you can send feet pic, no. <laughs> By the way, you can follow Bruce at Scales and Things. Uh, and I saw you messing with Beetlejuice. He was like all over you. I'm like, what's going on here? I gotta get in on this action. So what do you say we do it? Oh, dude, I'm so ready to show you. I, I, I It's been so much work in the making, dude. And I feel like I've been doing it in secret for a long time. Yeah. I'm just, oh, dude, I'm so, I'm like really stoked for you to yeah, like mess with him And today. you can see like, he's like, you know, there's there's meat over here and he's already like looking so smart. I mean, oh, literally he's looking like, how can I get to that meat? So like he knows this routine. Yeah, like he knows That's it. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and have some fun with Beetlejuice. See, uh, see how close we're getting to get this guy to where he's so socialized because I know down the road we're going to be able to mess with him a ton so it's going to be really cool. Let's do it. Will you not do that? He's just a little afraid of us. Yeah, he's a little, little, little timid with the cameras. Get the one. Get the other one. And how cool is that? I mean, just coming up on Bruce's hand like no big deal. Well, that's okay. Just doing a little climbing. There you go, Beetlejuice. <laughs> how cool is that? I mean, he's definitely come a long way. Do you want to just hold it to him? Yeah, right yeah. Here? go ahead and show you. Here you go, Beetlejuice. There you go, bud. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, that is so cool. That is definitely huge strides compared to what he was. Come on, Beetlejuice. You want some more? Come on, bud. There you go. <laughs> oh my God, I am loving it. And these guys are so smart. I mean, you can tell he's definitely acting differently just with us. I'm sure when oh, it's sorry. just Bruce. Come on, Beetlejuice. You want some? You want some food? I go for it, Frank. Again, you could have never done this to him not too long ago. So he's definitely getting better and better. Come on, you want some more? There you go, Beetlejuice. I mean, I tell you what, when we got Beetlejuice, I never thought we were gonna be able to get him like this. This is amazing. And he's only gonna get better and better as we're working with him more and more. 
Last piece, buddy. Good job. I mean, how cool is that? Bruce has been doing God's work with this animal. Definitely get it habituated. Definitely not as calm around us because there's a bunch of people here, but he's doing really well. So slowly we'll get him to a point where he can come out for not only Bruce, but for anyone, me and anyone else too. So uh, Bruce, you've been doing great with this guy. He is Thank absolutely, you can see his reflection over here. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Time to feed my little anaconda Viridae. She is crushing food now. Come on, little monkey. There she goes, whoa! I tell you what, anaconda's hit with a vengeance, even a little one like this, and I've said it a ton of times, I know it is weird that uh, she's like almost a two and a half year old or so, anaconda, and she's only this big, and then you look at Ivy, that is a, literally a, getting to be a monster that's only seven years old, but this is a side they really start to explode. Uh, Verde has grown a lot in the last five or six months. She's just gonna get bigger and bigger. We definitely are gonna move her up into a water feature enclosure relatively soon, so it's gonna be really good to see her continue to grow. She is such a beautiful animal still dog tame absolutely amazing one day she will be the size of ivy and i think that just like the relationship i have with ivy i think we'll have the same relationship with Verde. i mean they're just incredible i love green anacondas and it's always a pleasure seeing them eat like this whether they're little anacondas like Verde or giant anacondas like ivy i've called in the calvary people Lori, <laughs> I am uh, frustrated, I'm defeated, there's water on the ground, I can't figure this out, so Lori, you think that you can bring in a fresh set of eyes, what do you think's going on? I mean, it has to be, it has to be drawing back somewhere, because when we don't have that on, it's not leaking. Yeah, but when I, I sealed the hole back. Right, I know you did, but obviously it's still somewhere, so we're going to have to just shut it off, get the gators out, because I'm not going in there no. with them in there. And then just really look really close, because I mean, honestly, it doesn't take but a little tiny thing. I know, but that's a lot of water. It, it seems, I swear to gosh, every time I fix yeah. it, it leaks worse. Uh, that's yeah. what I don't understand. So obviously, whatever I'm doing is making the problem worse, not better. Yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah, I know. So, <laughs> so I don't know exactly when, but in the next couple days, guys, we're gonna try to tackle this. I, I really do feel defeated about this one because I've done everything I possibly can. If, if I could just find where I could see it's yeah. leaking, then you might have a that's, but and you that's can't see hard anything. thing, right? Because you didn't really make these very good accessible. No, the accessibility isn't great. Like I said, I can <laughs> I can get behind the waterfall, but this whole area here is solid. Yeah. So the only thing I could do is maybe strip back this rock wall and literally like drill holes in there to where we can look. I mean I don't know if that's drill an option. Holes. You know, oh. like oh, like yeah, because that's wood. That's solid wood all the way across. So I don't know. But anyway, so uh, the good news is I relinquished my responsibility. Lori, you're in charge. You let me know when it's fixed, okay? Actually, you know what we need? What's that? Does anybody have one of those little scope cameras? Oh yeah, little scope cameras. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's actually get a good through idea. The thing, instead of cutting wood and doing that. Yeah, then just drill a little hole. Yeah, so hit me up if you have a scope camera. I think plumbers have that. Okay, we know a plumber. Oh so yeah. give them a call. Okay. <laughs> See, she's already thinking better than me. <laughs> It's been a while since I've updated you on Mango here. Look at how long his tail is getting. He's doing really well, growing, crushing food. Uh, definitely an incredible animal. He's definitely gonna get big one day, so we're definitely gonna have to start thinking about where he's gonna go. I've mentioned that I wanna actually eventually put it in salt and peppers enclosure, but uh, we'll see what happens. It's still got a ways to go, but again, doing absolutely amazing. I love this guy, such a cool animal. Just wanted to show off a couple clovers that we got raising up. This is actually a little porphyracea or a bamboo rat snake. These guys are absolutely crazy looking. And there's a whole bunch of species of the porphyracea. There's uh, cox eye, valente, pulchra, all kinds of stuff. And they're actually pretty highly reproductive animal. They only have like three to five eggs, but they can literally have several clutches per year. So we have a few of these guys just coming up and they're absolutely beautiful and cryptid. Love these things. Can't wait till we can actually produce some of these on our own because I've never bred them before. For. So this will be a species that will be a first for me. Holy moly. Take a look at this snow corn snake here. I mean, it is so pink. It actually looks like an albino corn snake. It's got so much color, but this is actually one of those coral snow corn snakes. I mean, that is probably the highest colored coral snow I've ever seen. I mean, again, it's got so much pink. It literally looks more like an albino corn snake than a snow corn snake. That thing is ridiculous 
ridiculous. And we have a lot of these coral snows. And I've talked about it in the past, how they're polygenic, just basically meaning you're breeding the highest pink to the highest pink at every generation to get more and more pink. I tell you what, I don't think we can go any more pink than this. This is gonna be so much pink, it's gonna not look like a snow corn. It's just gonna look completely like an albino corn pretty soon. But that is one stunning example. It's time to feed salt and pepper. Uh, I think they're hungry and I think it's gonna be awesome. Even though their tank is leaking, I'm still gonna take care of them. Got some baby colubrids hatching right now. And of course, this is a pretty interesting combination. I really usually put one clutch of eggs per box, but I actually have some Mexican black kings, but these are those ones with pattern again. And it's always a little bit of a bummer. They do get blacker as they get older, but of course you wanna hatch out these solid jet black ones. So we have one female that has been producing these kind of yellowy blotch, almost look a little bit more like Splendida or the Desert Kings, but in actuality, these are nigritus. And then we have a whole bunch of really beautiful scaleless Texas rats here. So these guys look like they're going to be amazing. Once we get these guys in some water, get them all cleaned up, get them set up, they're going to be stunners. I mean, look at how beautiful these scaleless Texas rats are. So again, rare that I put two clutches in one egg box, but uh, in this case, we've got a whole bunch of babies and uh, I better put the lid on or they're going to be all over the place. Always love hatching these guys out. This is a pretty small clutch, but still there's three babies. These are actually tangerine albino Honduran milk snakes and oh my gosh again I've told the story before that we had the first albino Honduran milk snakes here produce the first ones but they weren't tangerine they were just kind of normal so over the years we've kind of refined the line to produce just more orange and more orange and just absolutely stunning these guys are so cool again Honduran milk snakes are a larger colubrid you know five six foot long they do really well you can see they're relatively placid as babies they can be a little squirmy but they calm down really well one of the cooler milk snakes for sure and then the tangerine albinos who talking that thing is gorgeous well Ben ate, Jerry didn't, so I don't know what's up with my two-headed snake. They were both eating so well, but that is the way it goes. As a matter of fact, right here is a video when I actually got Ben and Jerry, if you guys want to check that out. Up on this side, support my podcast channel. You guys know I put so much work into that. Please, please support my podcast channel. Go checking it. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.